Well, let's take a look at the S&P as a start. It's still in a very tentative situation, whether it's bottoming or not. Uh, a lot of debate here whether this is a retest or not. I actually think it is, but there's a tremendous amount of debate, and there's not a lot of extremely strong technical evidence to say this is the bottom yet. There's a few things that are starting to happen. We're starting to see this RSI data positively diverge. That means we're getting higher lows developing as the market comes back and retests those lows. That's marginally encouraging. And then we see things happening outside of the S&P 500. We see things happening in China. We see the 10-year bond yield peaking. So on the margin, we think things are starting to improve here. And we do have a few stocks that I think look completely bombed out that look timely. The market itself, there's a tremendous amount of resistance here around 2,800. So that debate on the market, I think, continues well into December. My view, my opinion, my guess here is that it's going to hold, certainly going into the G20, and then we recover into year end. But let's take a look at some ideas that have a stronger technical setup. So the home builders, they've been a disaster for much of 2018. I think 10-year bond yields have rallied back to the upper end of their secular downturn, the downturn that started in 2018, and are starting to peak. And the home builders have come down a very long way. If we look at that resistance band all the way back through 2013, 14, 15, and it's come right back to the 200 week. We love the 200 week as a long term support level and we think it's going to turn. We think they're relatively washed out. The risk reward is to the upside, certainly through year end and into the first quarter. So we think there's a seasonal bounce there. Now, where else? This is going to be a little bit of a tough stock to look at. BlackRock, who wants to own an asset manager in this environment? But again, similar to what we saw with Pulte, this is a stock that's been in a correction for a year. So it's not as though it's just breaking like technology. This is already 12 months or 10 months into the correction. And when we look at this momentum data, this 14-week RSI, that's a pretty deeply oversold level. Last time we saw that was back in the beginning of 2016. So again, names that have come down for an awfully long time, for a year or so, look like they're long-term support of the 200-week moving average. Pretty timely. I like the risk reward going into year end, despite the fact that it's an asset manager and all our concerns with uh, passive versus active. And the last one here is AMAT. So applied materials began to peak early at uh, the beginning of 2018 and the relative performance versus the 500 started to roll over. But here again, back to the 200 week, you've done a lot of damage. That weekly momentum, that weekly RSI is almost as oversold as we saw at the beginning of 2016. I think these three names on a risk reward basis are pretty positive going into year end, into the first quarter. I think there's a good seasonal bounce coming into those stocks. All right, Rob, come on over. Stephanie will bring the chair over. Thanks, Steph. Thank you. So, Rob, we were having a pretty fierce debate. As we I'm do. not sure if it was really As a debate because it was basically everyone oh, against Steve. Yeah. Yeah. But, Even though we're but here's long, the question. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> here's the question. I mean, is Apple, does it look like Apple has flushed? Watched. And can the markets actually <laughs> bounce if Apple sits, sits it out? All right, so I heard the debate. So if yeah. we're talking about the flush as in what we saw in 2007, 2000, or 2008, 2009, you're nowhere near there. But I don't think that's the kind of correction we're looking at. I think we're looking at a correction that is more of a cyclical unwind. Apple's getting pretty close. Do I, can I definitively say that's the bottom? No, but I think you're pretty close. I'd be a better buyer here into year end than a seller down at these levels. You just think that we chopped enough wood to the downside at this it's, point? It's pretty... Right. <laughs> it's what, the chopping over, wood? Yeah, I mean, we're using some great terms tonight. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty oversold on a short-term yeah, basis. But when you, when you really look at the technicals on the market as a whole, I, I trade them as little grains of sand within the overall market. When you see that the market is flattened to the point of the flush, you sort of need all those heavy lifters. Amazon is still up 28% year-to-date. So the, the conversation of why does year-to-date matter? Because you still have a lot of fat to trim from people who have not thrown in the towel. Well, lots of people bought Shopping. stocks back in 16 and 17 <laughs> and 18, right? So the year-to-date discussion, it, it's, it's debatable, as you guys have just had that debate. As we debated, I, yeah. I'm, just, I'm, <laughs> I'm, like not, I'm actually not convinced it matters that much. I think it's more in that last recent run that we had in Apple, right? So that little pause that we had in the fall where it took off, that's all been unwound. And we see that in a lot of, I mean, think about some of the other technology stocks. Facebook, for example. I'm not a big bull on Facebook, but it's down at the 200 week. We've already crushed an awful lot of technology stocks. NVIDIA's fallen apart. Is it the bottom? I'm not convinced we're there yet on NVIDIA, but you've taken a lot of heavy duty tech stocks down hard. I think, I think the risk reward into year end for the market and a lot of these names is to the upside. Can I make a quick comment on one of Rob's three names? Uh, yes, that would be welcome. Thank you. <laughs> AMAT stands out to me. Now, AMAT's base has been cut in half from the beginning of the year. It was a $65 stock, trading $35 now, give, give or take. Just reported their fourth quarter, which I thought was very good, 
but first quarter guidance was miserable. They took the stock out to the woodshed. I think we well, another one. The <laughs> well, metaphor I mean, I is this segment four in. total so far. But if you look at it, you had a huge volume day. You wonder how much is in this, and I get semi equipment's been grim death, but you say to yourself, how much is in the stock? I think most of it is now. And even when analysts took down their prices in mass, they took them down to the 50s, and this is a $35 stock. So I think the risk reward in an AMAT looks pretty interesting. Well, I mean, a name like BlackRock has been kind of left out in the cold, so to speak, in a world where you have the dynamic of lower fees uh, and expectations, actually, that earnings have been stagnating here. So, you know, the chart to me reflects the business model. It's, this is not a company that's about to fall off a cliff, by the way. This is the, one of the biggest money managers in the world at a time when the world's wealth management industry is very healthy. It pays you a 3.5% dividend. But let's face it, these guys made almost 30 bucks a share in 2017. They're going to make around you know, 29 and change, and they may go down to 28 next year. Fees are compressing in this industry, and I think that's something people are going to continue to push down on the multiple. Yeah. Karen, you like any of the names that Rob pitched? I thought Pool 2 is actually the most interesting. I mean, We need a such, metaphor, though. We need a metaphor. Something. I, you know. It's in the house. Oh. Uh, uh, <laughs> touche. Touche. No, it seems, I mean, there's so much negativity surrounding the whole space, right? And I think that rates was part of it. Rates have reversed. I don't know if that is the impetus to get people to buy a house now. I don't know. We'll see. But, I mean, it's not reflecting a lot of optimism at this point. None of them are. And they're all yeah. down as a very heavy-duty support from, from my standpoint. 200-week moving average is great support. You said 200-week. On here we had 200-day. Is uh, that wrong? I think it's 200-week, okay. actually. It's, it's a weekly chart. Okay. Um, and I think rates are stalling out. I don't think right. a lot Rates of and lumber prices yes. have come in by 40% or so. So you have a good foundation. Ah, Except nice. If you want to buy the home builders. It's like the eighth <laughs> metaphor slash simile mm. this segment. And we're only four minutes in or so. You want to toss one in? Actually, no, what I'd like to do is there are a bunch of people watching this show. I just got to, the Dublin pub in Morristown, the place is packed. They have a huge TV screen on, and they're watching Fast Money. So I'm just saying, this is their pre-holiday party, mm. and they're, they're Fast Money fans. So hi wow. to the folks at the Dublin pub in Morristown. Hello, Dublin yeah. pub. Wow. Hello. We're, so we're doing that these and, days. Yeah. <laughs> see, who we, see who we say hi to next. Um, Rob, thank you. Thank Rob you. Slimer of Fun Strut. Happy hump day.